nil victory in Turkey in Group 7. Uh, now in Group 2, another of those straightforward matches for Scotland, the kind that they've made a bit of a mess of in the past. San Marino, the opposition for a Scottish side, heading the group table before today with four matches played, but still some way short of making sure of qualification. Remember, only the group winners go through to the European Championship finals. San Marino, the tiny principality in the north of Italy, should not have provided any real opposition for the Scots. But here's Gerald Sinstad. Picturesque settings provides the background for a hiding to nothing encounter for Scotland. Newcomers to international football only five years ago, San Marino's lineup tonight lacks their only player with any pretensions. Bonini, who plays for Bologna, is injured. So they have three players from the Italian fifth division and three from the sixth division. The remainder all play for the same club here in San Marino. But it hasn't all been roses for Andy Roxburgh. He's left a number of probable first choices behind in Scotland, and two who did travel, McLeish and McStay, haven't been able to prove themselves fit. Maurice Malpas will play in the centre of defence. Brian McClare will support Gordon Dury and Kevin Gallagher as the front runners. Tonight's referee comes from Albania, Monsieur Kaimi, and thereby hangs something of a tail, because this time last night, nobody knew where on earth he was. The San Marino officials were a bit concerned about it, but he's turned up here with his two linesmen today. Scotland unveiling their new away strip in the white with the red decorations. San Marino all in blue. Header away was by Capti. Pitch in very good conditions. Already San Marino under pressure, putting ten men back. Stuart McCall, Benedettini, the goalkeeper for San Marino. McPherson with that tremendous height advantage. Foul by Muccioli. Strachan. McKimmy. What on earth was that? <laughs> Well, that's an indication of the lack of experience of this side. Zanotti's uh, diving header, completely unnecessary, given Scotland a quite unearned corner kick, which Strachan will take. And is that over the line? Cleared off. And disappointment for Scotland. Keeper, I think, just got his hands to it. Just what Scotland wouldn't have wanted, these conditions. The rain is anything unfamiliar to them, but uh, they've got problems enough here. A side that ought to be easy to beat, but. Interesting to see how long the referee is prepared to put up with tackles like that. It was Claudio Canti, already with one yellow card in the competition right through the man no chance of getting away with that keeper didn't hold it now knocked away from him by his own man and they really look very disorganized in defense Dury's header back in was very deliberate the keepers in there looking for it and it's been stabbed wide Kevin Gallagher from uh, Coventry City who Got the studs to it, I think, and just put it wide. But the goalkeeper, Benedettini, was all at sea. Strachan. Judiciously kept in that time. Dury's header. Ball kept in by the San Marino defender. Fell in the end to the advantage of Strachan. His cross was struck well. Dury's header wasn't on target. Person. Nice little touch from McClare for McAllister. Now he's got some room. And a good save this time from Benedettini from McAllister's left foot. 
Here's Ciccoli trying to sort it out for San Marino, and he's earned them a breathing space by giving away the throw in. But Benedettini had come to the edge of his six-yard area and maybe beyond to fist away as he's two or three yards outside, stood up well, and punched away the shot from McAllister. Foul is given. The tenth foul for which San Marino have been uh, penalised. Coley had made the run and he's been found. And there's a Matza in the middle. Oh, that's a good check back. Gorham was well positioned and Pasolini at least had the satisfaction of a shot on target. Most of his attacks had come down the left, basically a left footed player. So when he found himself free on the right, was able to check back, wrong foot the defender. And the left foot shot into the waist of Andy Gore. Now McAllister, good save by Benedettini. Across that time, dropped right on McAllister's head. Got over it and down. Benedettini was behind it. McAllister, good header. Two fists from Benedettini. Foul is given. Obstruction. More work for Strachan. Kimmy, the other Scottish player in the picture, but Strachan will take it. Skipper tonight. All away by Guerra. Dury. No offside flag. Wouldn't come down for McAllister when he needed it. Dury puts it back in. And they're having trouble getting it away. That was uh, in the end Muccioli who cleared it. But uh, it did seem as though Scotland paused for a moment, expecting an offside flag, and it didn't come. Scotland have decided that it's time to try to bring about some form of change, and they're going to take off Brian McClare, and Pat Nevin will come on in his place. The Everton player with about 35 minutes to see if he can change the pattern of play. What they're going to do is put uh, Deary into the middle where he probably feels happier, although I must say I've seen him do a good job down the flanks in his time for Scotland, but he now yields that position to Nevin, who is, by talent and instinct, very much a winger. Free kick has been given. The substitute waiting to come on for uh, San Marino is Toccacelli, a defender. Lyons been trying to wave the two-man wall back. And that's a corner. And an opportunity for the substitution. If the referee's attention can be attracted. The player to come off is Zanotti, who was cautioned in the first half. Pacelli, 23 years old, plays in the local third division in San Marino. So Strachan to take it, that's Dury 11, Nevin is the 13, five on the near post is the big McPherson, that's Dury, Nevin. Now that's what's got the knee, but they need better crosses than that. Lost uh, Ciccoli, who was the defender. Oh, 
Well, the attendance tonight is uh, something of an improvement on San Marino's last international, which drew something around 500 people. Tonight, 3,512, paying more than 43 million lira. Sounds quite a lot of money to be translated into just over 20,000 pounds. Malpas. Matza, Paolo Matza, Marco Matza rather. Brothers are very alike. A call pursued by Francini. Kimi. Akil was a good idea but didn't succeed. All one back by Dury. Then forward for Nevin. And that's a penalty short. Well, that'll break the deadlock. Tocacelli, the substitute, his first real contribution is to bring down the Scotland substitute Pat Nevin and give away a penalty which will relieve a lot of Scottish minds. Strachan, 34 years of age, seen it all, done it all, unperturbed and puts the penalty away beautifully and that now will change the shape of the game completely. Scotland have got the breakthrough they were looking for. The substitution really must take a lot of the credit. The Scots fans celebrate, but Andy Roxburgh's decision to put on Nevin made all the difference, gave Strachan the opportunity to put Scotland one in front from the spot. Good turn away by Gobby. Dury. Got to the line, got the corner. Strack at the corner kick. McPherson coming. Dury! Second goal, and now Scotland can relax and begin to think about their goal difference. It's an entirely different game now. They've had corners in the first half and failed to take advantage. This time, Strachan delivered, and so did Dury. What a beautiful header. They're claiming that Ciccoli got it off the line before it had crossed who he was with his hand. The referee not disposed to give a penalty, accepted that that was over the line. And up goes Gobby. The header by Dury was really not very far wide of Benedettini's right hand upright. Well, a very good header from Dury. Uh, Benedettini was worried. Well, it finished 2-0. Scotland win, but not very impressively. One other result from Group 2 tonight. Bulgaria 2, Switzerland 3. The Swiss coming from 2-0 down. They scored twice in the last five minutes, and that was a bit of a surprise victory. And it sets the Swiss up as Scotland's main challengers in Group 2. Scotland's next game is in Switzerland in September. And, Jimmy, how will they cope with that on tonight's form? Well, I hope. I uh, must say it's decided me not to go to San Marino for my holidays. Uh, <laughs> the natives are not that friendly, judging by that first tackle I saw, and I didn't like the look of the weather either. So uh, Scotland did well to survive that lot, I think. Awkward game for them to play in, yeah. uh, and no real test of how good they're going to be when they get a, against the more difficult sides. But uh, the right substitution at the right time by Andy Roxburgh, it seems manager bashing, bashing is becoming the most popular sport in this uh, in this country of ours but uh, he, he, he picked the right spot to make a change and decided the match and I think they'll be feel themselves lucky to get out of that place without any injuries indeed but the other thing that surprised me of course was that the other side uh, wanted to take the Scottish shirts don't like yes, that pattern yes not a no. great design are mm, they but weird uh, glad to see the back <laughs> of those I'm sure <laughs> okay the Scots still on course now uh, group four that's the Northern Ireland group uh, Yugoslavia clear favorites to qualify here but for the Irish 
the chance to put the form book right and move above those upstarts from the Faroe Islands in that Group 4 table. But remember, the Faroes had that astonishing victory over Austria in their first match in the competition. Northern Ireland against the Faroe Islands then. Brief highlights with the commentator in Belfast, Mark Robson. Key. Aim for Clark and Dowie gets the flick. Black. Well, Northern Ireland have had two very good chances now. And it was quite a nice little move, a nice little flick. But Black didn't strike the shot at all well. Well, this could swing in. Black, but away by Jakobsen. Only as far as Black. Donaghy's outside of Kingsley Black. Good header by Kevin Wilson, his second chance of the game in the opening 10 minutes of the match. Taggart, Magilton, Wilson, Black, Magilton, good football. Jakobsen in the way. Reinheim loses out to Danny Wilson. And the free kick given against Reinheim for the foul on Danny Wilson. Minute of injury time play. Danny Wilson looks for Alan McDonald. Yes! Colin Clark has scored. His ninth goal for his country. Deep into injury time at the end of the first half. McDonald had sneaked up from the back. What a good header that was, and Clark was so quick. Black. Taggart. Oh, well away from Colin Clark. Here's Reinheim. Hansen. A little bit more bite in the tackling in the second half. And Morcore absolutely on his own in this right-hand side. Muller on the run down the right. Good header. Reinheim. He scored. Alan McDonald can't believe it. And the Pharaohs will know how to celebrate. Morcore's cross came in. And there was Kerry Reinheim in behind the defence. And Key was beaten easily. Donaghy looking for Clark. Good effort. One minute and 30 seconds of injury time played. And that's enough, says the referee. And the Pharaohs celebrate. As the Pharaohs celebrating with very good reason. They've beaten Austria. They've got a point in Belfast. And Northern Ireland still without a win in that group, and their spirits must be a stark contrast with those of those Faroe Islanders. And here's the Group 4 situation, a surprise result there also tonight. Uh, Yugoslavia 1, Denmark 2. Darko Panchev scored for Yugoslavia, but Bent Christensen scored twice for Denmark. Uh, Yugoslavia's grip on that group somewhat weakened. Now, Jimmy, why is it that sides like the Faroes are proving so tough? Well, for Northern Ireland, because they, they're they really at a, a low, an all-time low in confidence and, you know, players who have style and aggression. I mean, they're not, they, they've got to rebuild that side. Billy, nothing's going right for Billy Bingham. When you come up against a side ambitious and on having had a couple of good results like the Faroes, and they go there, they're sophisticated in the number of players they play back in defence. Uh, they put large numbers there. You've got to break them down. Uh, it, you know, there is no side these days that that can't make life difficult uh, if a team is not at its best. Of course the superior side will win if everything is as normal. Um, you know, we would all beat everybody on our day, like at golf when we're playing well. well <coughs> I've heard stories about your golf. Well, we <laughs> yeah. won't, yes, stories we can't go into now, but we will turn now to a side that uh, proved themselves very difficult to beat, from the Faroe Islands and San Marino to the great power in world football, the world champions Germany, playing in group five, uh, and this is the group that at the moment is headed by Wales and the Welsh still have to play the Germans twice in their run into qualification. But tonight in Hanover, it was Germany against Belgium. Germany in white, once again, brief highlights with Tony Gubber. 
Germany keeping on the pressure in these opening couple of minutes. Their fourth throw in succession. Well, Mateus neatly stepped inside. And that's a good long cross. It went over the top of Prudhomme. Oh, has it gone in? Is it given? Vola. What a great start for Germany. Rudi Vola's 42nd international goal. And it comes right at the start of this crucial Group 5 qualifying match against Belgium. They certainly set about this with a will, did the Germans. They had four throw-ins in quick succession. That cross by Mateus could have been turned behind, surely. And then it was knocked back by Mateus, and Voller turned it in on the line. Well, no doubt from his reaction that Ruud Voller's going to claim that. Terry Yorath in the crowd. Vital result this for the Welsh, of course, who are currently top of Group 5. And there's no doubt, is there really, when you see that replay, that the goal with which Germany opened the scoring probably came from Lothar Matthäus because it looked as though all the ball was across the line before Vola knocked it back. This is Bertholdt. The flick on was by Klinsmann to find Hessler. Knocked in by Doll. And again they have it. Bremer! Oh, what a left foot he has. Andreas Bremer, whose goal took Germany, West Germany as it was then, through to the World Cup final in the semi-final against England, and who scored against Argentina with the penalty. He's got a terrific left foot on him. Reminiscent of our own Stuart Pearce at Nottingham Forest, and that wasn't too far away. Ball into Schiffel. Krasson, Schifo again, trying to find the fullback. He's made a good run forward, the 19-year-old. He's got inside Bremer, and it's a good cross. Oh, fine save by Ildner. First time that the Belgians have threatened, and it was a good stop with his chest by Ildner. Klinsmann. It was a good forward run by the young 19-year-old fullback, Krasson, who got around Bremer, and the cross into the middle finally fell for Mark Vilmots whose shot was well saved by Ildner. And Germany's win over Belgium puts them just a point behind Wales at the top of Group 5, uh, and the Germans uh, play their next game in Wales on June the 5th, and Terry Yorath, a very interested spectator in Hanover tonight. Group 3 tonight, uh, a win for Italy. Italy 3, Hungary 1, and Norway 3, Cyprus 0. Italy uh, level on points at the top of that group uh, with... Hungary. That's Group 3. Well, Terry Yorath, uh, he missed his side in action tonight. They played uh, a friendly tonight. Wales beating Iceland by a goal to nil. A Paul Bowden penalty. Well, that completes our soccer. Jimmy, thanks for your uh, contribution.